ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الكلام كلام الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد ندير الله سبحانه وتعالى with the revelation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he blessed them ayyuhal ikhwa with the best of the books and the best of the shara'i'ah the best book that was ever revealed and the best sharia that was ever given to any prophet or any messenger but what should be known ayyuhal ikhwa is that that which is present within the sharia of Muhammad from the affairs that the scholars mention are from the wisdoms or the greater intents and goals of the Sharia. Those wisdoms and goals and intents were present within every single Sharia that has passed. The scholars they mention that there are a number of affairs referred to or known as the Dururiyat. Those things that Allah Azza wa Jal had legislated and revealed every single Sharia to protect. Whether we're speaking of the Sharia that was given to Musa, that which was given to Ibrahim, that which was given to Isa, that which was given to Yahya, every single one of the prophets and messengers, they received by way of Sharia. <coughs> Either that they received the whole book, and a Sharia Jadida, a new Sharia, or that they were given elements of revelation that complemented the Sharia and the uh, book that came previous to them coming and being sent, regardless of what it was, and regardless of the affair, that which each and every one of them came to establish were these Dururiyat and the protection of these Dururiyat. The Dururiyat then are those things that are considered necessities. Those things that Allah Azza wa Jal had sent the revelation to protect. And the scholars they mention that the Dururiyat, they are khams, they are five. That Allah Azza wa Jal has sent the re religion and sent the Sharia to protect five main things. And when we look at the ahkam and we look at the rulings, we see that the ahkam and the rulings return back to those things. And they mention from them the deen, first and foremost. Secondly, they mention that which is related to the nafs, that is to the persons, to individuals, the protection of them. And that Allah Azza wa Jal had sent the religion to protect them. And each and every one of these things that we will mention, we see that the affairs of the Sharia yatafarra and are considered sub issues or subsidiary issues returning back to these dururiyat al khams. The third of them they mention is the aql, the intellect. The Allah Azza wa Jal has sent the religion to protect it. The fourth of them they mention. The Ird and the Ird Ikhwan is in a broad sense the honor of the Muslim. And beneath that category, there are a number of things. Protecting his lineage 
and protecting him from being dishonored. And the fifth of them is the mal or the wealth of the believer. And so the sharia, when we look at all of that which has been legislated, we see that the protection of these five things is present in and among and within the ahkam and within the legislation. And that is because of the fact that these things are necessity, necessities for the maslah and the masalih and for the good of human beings. And thus Allah Azza wa has legislated that which will protect them. Of course, ikhwan, the most important of those issues is that which is related to the deen of Allah Azza wa the religion. Allah Azza wa has sent down from Adilla and from Baraheen, from proofs and evidences, that which first and foremost establishes the deen, establishes that it is the haqq, establishes that mankind should worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone in tawheed, establishes that that which every single one of the prophets and the messengers they came to first and foremost was the establishment of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is the most important of the dururiyat al-khams it is the most important of the five and so we see that Allah azza wa jal has legislated affairs related to it just as we have that which prohibits anything that causes a breakdown in or a distortion of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. We see the strong uquba and the strong recompense that is based or that is built upon the affair of shirk and establishing shirk and kufr in the hereafter. We see the strong position of the, of the nusus and the text of the sharia concerning bid'ah and innovations and those things that are created by individuals and attributed to the deen. We see the strong statements of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fahuwa rad. Whosoever innovates in this affair of ours, that which is not from it, then it is rejected. We see the strong stance in terms of the various forms of legislated protection, even if it is that the Muslimun are warred against, then of course it is prescribed that they protect their deen and protect themselves. And so we see then, from the various elements and forms of the legislation, we see the protection of the deen being something that is present in numerous elements and in numerous affairs of the deen of Allah Azza wa Various things have been legislated in order to protect this great affair. Similarly, as it relates to the protection of the nufus and of the nafs and of oneself, likewise we find that throughout the nusus and the text of the sharia, we see this affair of protecting oneself, protecting the self, protecting the person, guarding life, honoring life. And Allah Azza wa has made mention of that in numerous verses in the Quran. الَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٍ ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك إلى القاثامة الله عز وجل mentions those who do not call upon an individual upon anyone other than Allah any deity other than Allah ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله neither do they kill and take the soul of that نفس that Allah عز وجل has made haram neither do they fornicate and whosoever does that, then he will find and he will meet Athama. That is, he will meet that he's great, the, gra the, the gravity of his sin on the day of judgment. And so the affair, then we see the mention of the deen. لا يدعون ما الله إله آخر They don't call upon a deity other than Allah. And then Allah follows that with وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي هَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Neither do they kill the soul that Allah Azza wa Jal has made haram except with right. Similarly, we have the lights of the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal as occurs in Surah Al-An'am. قُلْ تَعَالَوْ أَتْلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ That Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, say to them, come 
and I will recite to you that which your, your Lord has made haram upon you and la tushriku bihi shay'a that you do not make shirk with him with anything wa bil walidayni ihsana and that you are dutiful to your parents and so we have first and foremost the mention of being uh, upon upon tawheed and staying away from shirk and that it being coupled uh, with uh, the uh, affair of being dutiful and honorable to one's parents and then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْ أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشَّةَ إِمْلَاكٍ and do not kill your awlad do not kill your children min imlaq from imlaq or fearing that you will not be able to cater for them or you will not be able to provide for them نَحْنُ نَرْزُكُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ we will provide for them and you or provide for you and them and so Allah Azza wa Jal again early in the ayah we have the affair of the protection against killing and the worst of those who one would kill is kill the one who is ordinarily guarded protected mercy is ordinarily shown to them and that is the child and so we see then the affair of this killing being from the greatest of the things that are mentioned alongside that which is related to the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal Similarly, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, اجتنبوا السبع المبقات Stay away from the seven deadly sins. And the first of them, without doubt, is الشرك بالله That a person makes shirk with Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned, والسحر and magic. For indeed, ikhwan, it is connected strongly to the affair of shirk and of kufr. Since magic in and of itself, ikhwan, its manifestation comes off the back of kufr and shirk. And that the magician, he must commit shirk and kufr in order for the jinn to be subservient to him. And then we have the mention of qatlu nafs allati haram Allahu illa bil Killing the soul that Allah has made haram except with right. And so we see then, the affair of the preservation of the life and the preservation of souls being foremost or from the foremost of the things that the Prophet ﷺ warned against. We have in a number of ahadith the similar affair. As the Messenger ﷺ, he mentioned, لا يزال المؤمن في فسحة من دينه ما لم يصب دما حراما that indeed the mu'min will not cease being in an expanse or in, an, in spaciousness from his religion. And he will not, continue, not cease doing well as long as he does not spill blood. And he spill that dam and that blood that is haram and sacred. Similarly, the Messenger Sallallahu he mentioned, لَزَوَالَ الدُّنْيَا أَهْوَانُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ قَتْلِ رَجُلٍ مُسْلِمٍ That indeed for the, for the dunya, to end is lighter with Allah than to kill a believing man. And Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned that in the Quran. وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَغَدِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَعَنَ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُ عَذَابًا عَظِيمًا Allah Azza wa Jal mentions then whosoever kills the mu'min muta'ammida, listen to what Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, is upon him. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاهُهُ جَهَنَّمْ Number one, جَزَاؤُهُ, his punishment is Jahannam. فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ وَغَدِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ And Allah is angry with him. وَلَعَنَ And Allah curses him. And Allah has prepared for him a severe punishment. A severe punishment. And so we have then upon this affair a number of grave, grave issues that every single believer will seek to flee from. And so and then, Ikhwan, the affair of killing the believer is from the affairs or taking the life, taking souls, innocent souls, whether they are believers or disbelievers. Is something that Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned is from the grave affairs. Similarly, we have the protection and the preservation of the aql, of the intellect, and likewise we see that Allah legislates that which preserves the aql, preserves the intellect. 
We see the prohibition against drinking khamar. Innama al-khamr wa al-maysir, as Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned, indeed khamar and maysir, and slaughtering at the pulpit, and divination is rijz. Min amal al-shaytani fajtanibu. It is filthy from the works of the devil, so stay away from it. It is something that befugs the mind, something that affects the aql. And so Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, indeed Allah, indeed, the shaytan, wishes to place between you wishes to place between you baghda which wishes to place between you enmity and to place between you uh, animosity and adawa he wishes to yuqi abaynakum al adawa wal baghda bil khamr wal maysir wa yasuddukum an dhikrillah wa an as-salah fa hal antum muntahun Allah mentions that indeed the shaytan wishes to place between you am enmity and hatred and to prevent you from the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah and the salah. So will you not desist? And so the affair then of the preservation of the aql we see, the prohibition against drugs, the prohibition against intoxicants, the prohibition against alcohol, all of those things are prohibited for the purpose of protecting and preserving the aql, preserving the intellect. Since it is by way of the sound intellect that one reflects upon the ni'm of Allah Azza wa and His blessings. It is by way of the sound intellect that one reflects upon the malakut samawati wal ard, upon that which is around him from the samawat, from the heavens and the earth. It is by way of the sound intellect that he reflects upon that which Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed from the book of Allah Subhanahu, And when the intellect is befugged, and when he does not have his faculties about him, then he harms himself and he harms others. How many a life has been taken on the basis of intoxicants and an individual having his mind befugged? How many a marriage has ended due to it? How many a person has been killed because of it? How many cases of suicide do we know due to it? And that then, Ikhwan, is indicative of the harm that is present within this form uh, of, or this thing that Allah Azza wa Jal uh, has uh, uh, prohibited because of the fact that it affects the aql. And the aql, Ikhwan, is from those things that Allah Azza wa Jal has revealed the Sharia to protect for Bani Adam. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا وبعد. Indeed, إخوان, from the things that Allah Azza wa Jal has sent the Sharia to protect is the preservation of the ird or the preservation of one's honor. And the people of knowledge they mentioned that the preservation of the honor it encompasses a number of things. It includes that which is present from the preservation of the honor as it relates to the character of that individual. And likewise as it relates to his social affairs, the preservation of his family, the preservation of his lineage, the preservation of his standing in and among the community. And so we have the, pro the prohibition against zina and the had and the prescribed punishment that is present within it, whether it be fornication or adultery, because of the manner in which it harms the lineage. It harms families. And when our societies and our communities are conglomerations of families, preserving the family ikhwan is of the essence. And thus that the lineage be defiled and be harmed and spoiled by way of this crime and this sin is something that Allah Azza wa Jal has preserved and that is present throughout every sharia. He has legislated that which would preserve it from the prescribed punishment for the one who carries it out and likewise 
from the strong texts that are present warning against uh, and uh, making those things haram. Similarly, we have that which is related to preserving the honor of the one who is accused of it. The honor of the one who is accused of such actions. Since his honor or her honor, if he is innocent of such a crime, it must be protected. For indeed Allah Azza wa Jal has sent down the Sharia for the preservation of the honor. And thus we have the whipping and the flogging of the one who carries out Al-Qadf, the one who makes an, makes an accusation against an innocent woman or an accusation against an innocent man or an accusation that is not established and, and, and has the evidence of four witnesses then we have the prescribed flogging for such an individual since the deed has been revealed to preserve the honor and that is to preserve the lineage and to preserve against such, such slander and such accusation Similarly, from the affairs that are or that return back to the preservation of the honor, that which has been revealed from the haram nature of sukhriya, of ridicule, the haram nature of namima, the haram nature of ghiba, backbiting, and uh, 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 accusing each other or hurling abuse. Or refer to referring to individuals by way of al-qab and by way of titles that they dislike. All of that Allah Azza wa Jal has made haram since it returns back to this affair of preserving the honor. And the last of them, the preservation of the wealth. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا أَمْوَالَكُمْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْبَاطِلِ إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ تِجَارَةً أَن تَرَاضٍ مِّنْكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, and do not consume the wealth of each other between you, or the wealth that you have between you, bil batil falsely. Illa an takuna tijara tan an taradim minkum. Except that it is tijara, except that it is trade that you mutually agree to. Wala taqutulu anfusakum. Here again we see Allah Azza wa Jal mentioning, and do not kill yourselves. Inna Allah ka'na bikum rahima. For indeed Allah Azza wa Jal has been merciful to you. So we see again the preservation of wealth, the preservation uh, of the self or the soul of an individual. And thus we have that which is related from the prescribed punishment for the sariq, the prescribed punishment for the thief uh, and the one who takes wealth unlawfully. All of those things then, Ikhwan, legislated for the purpose of preserving these great noble dururiyat, and if you reflect upon the various elements of the Sharia, you will see that they return back to the preservation of these great things. Nasala subhanahu wa ta'ala wa fikra wa iyaakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yirda wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa akhir da'awana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.